Apple's 13-inch MacBook Pro has just been released for 2020, and since a lot of people have been waiting to upgrade, I'm gonna walk you through some mistakes you should avoid when buying a new MacBook, and then I'll finish off with which model you should buy for your specific use case, as well as which upgrades are worth it and which ones aren't. We already made a video answering your guys' questions about why Apple kept the 8th gen chip in the base model, and when we expect the 14-inch MacBook Pro redesign to get released. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click the end screen button at the end of this video to check it out. This year, there are only a couple of changes on the base model. The switch to the excellent new Magic Keyboard that comes with a physical escape key and getting double the storage for the same price. Now, if you're wanting to make this upgrade solely because of that Magic Keyboard, then you need to be sure to avoid mistake number one. Not everyone knows that the 2020 MacBook Air also gets the exact same new Magic Keyboard while also getting better battery life and it's $300 cheaper as well. So if you just want that great new keyboard and you don't really care that much about performance, then the MacBook Air is actually a much better buy for you. But be sure to keep in mind that the quad-core model of the MacBook Air suffers from some overheating issues, so you should check out our overheating video after this. Now for those who do care about performance or those who want a better display with higher color accuracy, the new 13-inch MacBook Pro is for you. There are two models, the base 13 $1,500 model, which didn't change very much, and then the $1,800 model, which comes with the new 10th gen CPU, which packs faster processor and graphics performance, it comes with more RAM that's even faster than before, more storage, and other features that I'll mention in just a minute. Moving on to mistake number two, if you're going to be buying the base model, then absolutely do not pay for the $300 processor upgrade, because first of all, it won't make that big of a difference in performance, and second of all, you're now only $200 away from the more expensive $1800 model, which has an i5 processor that will blow this i7 CPU away in terms of performance. For mistake number three, if you wanna buy the base model but also upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, you might not realize that the $1800 model already has these specs, but it also comes with a much better 10 gen processor and a bunch of other features like much faster graphics performance, much faster RAM speed, an extra two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two cooling fans instead of just one, upgraded speaker quality, and support for connecting a 6K resolution display. Now on the flip side, I do actually think it makes sense to upgrade just the RAM to 16 gigs if you like to do a lot of multitasking, like with lots of Chrome tabs, for a total of $1,400. So mistake number four is not upgrading the RAM when you really should. But of course, this depends on your use case. On to mistake number five. Don't go overboard and spend $800 on two terabytes of SSD storage. I personally think that most consumers should be fine with one terabyte, so you should put that extra money into upgrades that you'll notice every day, like buying the $1,800 model. Now the rest of these mistakes have to do with that more expensive MacBook Pro. Mistake number six would be spending $200 upgrading the CPU to the i7. There realistically isn't any difference between the i5 and the i7 except for clock speeds, and from past experience, there really isn't a big noticeable difference when you spend that cash. So that $200 will be much better spent on getting one terabyte of storage or going towards the RAM upgrade. However, make sure to also avoid mistake number seven. Don't upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM unless you absolutely know you need it because it'll only make a difference if the tasks you work on are actually able to max out 16 gigs of RAM. Now onto mistake number eight, you might be tempted to choose the $1,800 model and upgrade everything to get a crazy fast machine, but you might not know that the 16-inch MacBook Pro has certain advantages that make it a much better choice for some people, like the fact that it gets a six core processor at the base price, a dedicated graphics card that gives you a huge boost in graphics performance, 
and other features like better speakers and microphones. And finally, for mistake number nine, you might be holding off on upgrading because you're waiting for the upcoming 14 inch MacBook Pro redesign, which is coming either at the end of this year or early next year. But I'm fairly certain that only the higher end $1,800 model will be upgraded to that 14 inch design, or at least at first. So if you realistically can't see yourself spending at least $1,800 on that new MacBook Pro, then it would actually be a mistake waiting for that instead of buying the $1,300 model right now and enjoying it for the extra months that you would have waited. So now that we have those mistakes out of the way, let's get right into the buyer's guide. First off, if you do a little bit of photo editing, programming, video editing, or using Logic Pro 10 every once in a while, then the base $1,300 MacBook Pro is an excellent choice since it comes with the color accurate and bright display along with the well-cooled quad-core processor. Now, if you do productivity work like that very often, then I would recommend upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM because we found that it greatly helps with things like video and photo editing, but you should also be careful to not upgrade too many things. I'd say that a good rule of thumb is if your $1,300 model ends up being $1,600 when you're finished adding upgrades, then I would honestly recommend just spending $200 more on the $1,800 model since it already comes with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and other great features like better speakers, an extra two ports, and an extra cooling fan. Now for those who really take their work seriously, or for those who are gonna be using the MacBook Pro to make money, then I would definitely recommend that you buy the $1,800 model because of the faster 10th gen processor, faster 3733 megahertz RAM, extra ports, and better cooling system. And on top of that, the base 512 gig SSD should be faster than the 256 gig one in the $1,300 model. Now, if you're a dedicated photo editor, I think that for the first time ever, this 13 inch MacBook Pro is actually suitable for heavy photo editing since the new 10 gen chip is very efficient and it now comes with a 32 gig RAM option. Last year, we recommended the 16 inch MacBook Pro for very serious photo editors because of the 32 gig RAM option because it's by far the biggest thing that affects photo editing, even more so than the six core processor and 32 gigs is really the sweet spot. So now you can get the 13 inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM for $2,200 instead of $2,800 for 32 gigs on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So that's a really great savings. This would also be a really great choice for anyone who does programming or any other tasks that they know can use that much RAM. And in terms of storage options, I would recommend getting one terabyte of SSD storage for serious productivity work. Now video editing does benefit for more RAM, but we would honestly recommend anyone that's doing serious video editing or graphics processing work to just go for the 16-inch MacBook Pro because it gets a dedicated graphics chip and this will make the biggest difference by far. Even with the new integrated graphics and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, it still gets nowhere near as much graphics performance compared to the base 16-inch Pro, so keep that in mind. And finally, if you don't really care about specs and performance and the overall MacBook experience means more to you, then I would honestly recommend holding off for the 14-inch MacBook Pro redesign, which could be coming either later this year or early next year. So if this video helped you make a decision on which MacBook Pro you should buy, we'll have links to the best deals down in the description below. And if you're still confused on which one to buy, then you can leave a comment down below and we'll help you out with your specific use case. Now we've already ordered these new 2020 MacBook Pros, so if you don't wanna miss out on our in-depth comparison videos, you can click that circle above to subscribe right now and click that bell below so you don't miss out on the notifications. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.